Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today, we're gonna to work on the air intake manifold problem. But before we get started, we gotta call upon our student volunteer, Charlie. Remember, he's our success story. He started in pre-algebra and made it all the way to calculus. Let's see what he's up to. He better be ready to go. Charlie, what are you doing over there? You got your worksheet? All right, let's get started right there. All right, Charlie, there's our graphing plane, there's our x-axis, our y-axis, and our z-axis. Today, we're gonna to be dealing with a bounded region that is bounded between the x-axis, the line x equal natural log of 1 half, the line x equal natural log of 2, and the exponential function f of x equals e to the x. That shaded region indicates our bounded region. Now, our manifold consists of two separate pieces whose volume can be found by generating semicircular cross-sections whose radii is equal to the length of the partitions that are perpendicular to the x-axis and bounded between the x-axis and the function f of x equals e to the x. Yeah, I know. Here, let me give you a picture of it. Here we go, Charlie. There you go. Now, there's our piece. There it is from another angle. There it is from the underside. And we're going to take two of these pieces to create our manifold that's going to redirect and accelerate air around that triangular obstruction there. And so we'll attach them at the front and put them on either side. Now, our inlet consists of two semicircular shaped inlets. They are slightly at an angle, so don't forget that. And each individual outlet is semicircular. Now, our first question is to find the area of the inlet or the combined area from the two semicircular inlets. All right, Charlie, now look at the graph. Now, the inlet radius can be found by looking at the point of intersection of the line x equal natural log of 2 and f of x equals e to the x. That y coordinate represents the radius of one of the semicircular inlets. And so, how do we find that y coordinate, Charlie? f alone of 2. Very nice, and that is e to the log of 2. Bring us home. Two. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, the combined area of our two semicircular inlets give us the area of a circle. And so we'll substitute radius with two, right? And so the combined area is four pi inches squared. Oh, I did forget to mention that our units are in inches. So there we go. Now, our next question is to find the area of one of the individual outlets, which are semicircular, right? All right, Charlie, now for that, we gotta look at the other side of the graph, and now we're looking at the point of intersection between the line x equal natural log of 1 half and f of x equals e to the x. That y coordinate represents the radius of the semicircular outlet. And so how do we find y, Charlie? f of natural log of 1 half. Which is? e to the natural log of 1 half. Bring us home? 1 half. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, since our outlets are semicircular, we'll use the formula area equals one half pi r squared, and we'll substitute r with one half. All right, Charlie, what's one half squared? One fourth times one half, one eighth. Very nice, and so our area is pi over eight inches squared. Now that is the area of one of the individual outlets, right? All right, Charlie, now that we're warmed up, let's do a tougher one. All right, don't get scared. Here we go, Charlie, right here. Now in this problem, we have to find the volume of the manifold. Remember, there's two separate pieces. So let's do a quick review. You remember, Charlie, we did circular cross sections and we defined the volume to be pi r squared delta x, where delta x was the width of the partitions that are perpendicular to the x-axis, and that's the case we have in this problem, right? And so our radius can be defined as f of x, in this case, which is e to the x, right? Okay, now, because each individual piece is composed of semicircular cross sections, our volume is gonna be half of a disc, but because we have two of them, we're gonna double it. And the partitions that we're using are moving along the x-axis from natural log of 1 half to x equal natural log of 2, pi. Now, our function is e to the x, and we have to square that, that's our r squared dx. Obviously, 1 half times 2 is 1, the pi is a constant, so we can bring that out in front. And now, Charlie, what's e to the x raised to the second power? 
e to the 2x. That's right, you multiply the exponent. There we go. Now, we have to integrate e to the 2x, which at this point of the class, Charlie, you should be able to integrate by kung fu. What is it? e to the 2x over 2. Very nice there, Charlie. Or you can use a u substitution if you have to. Don't forget about your limits of integration. Now we'll substitute those in to give us e to the 2 natural log of 2, subtract e to the 2 natural log of 1 half. And don't forget, Charlie, 2 to the natural log of 2. You can square the argument and get natural log of 4. Similarly, with 1 half natural log of, I'm sorry, with 2 natural logs of 1 half, you can square the argument 1 half and get natural log of 1 fourth. All right, Charlie, now, what's e to the natural log of 4? 4, 4. And e to the natural log of 1 fourth? 1 fourth. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, 4 subtract 1 fourth. Remember, 4 is 16 fourths. Subtract 1 fourth is what, Charlie? 15 fourths. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, bring us home. 15 pi over 8. Very nice there, Charlie. So our total volume is 15 pi over 8 inches cubed. All right, now that we're really warmed up, let's do a tougher one. Don't get scared, Charlie. We're going to use the force. Just relax. All right, Charlie, now in this question, we're asked to find the entire surface area of our manifold. Whew. All right, here we go, Charlie. Now, don't forget, we have two separate pieces. Now, each individual piece is half the area of a surface of revolution. Remember, we covered this before. And so we have the one half times the integral for finding the area of a surface of revolution, right? All right, now on the underside, we have two little areas that are mirrored from that shaded region up there, right? And don't forget, since we have two pieces, we'll have four of these shaded regions, right? But each individual part has two of these mirrored areas, which are defined to be the integral of e to the x, right? From natural log of 1 half to natural log of 2. There we go. Okay, so now our total surface area, Charlie, we'll start with the area of a surface of revolution. We have two pieces, but each piece is half the area of a surface of revolution, right? Okay, and we're integrating from natural log of 1 half to natural log of 2. 2 pi, f of x is what, Charlie? e to the x. That's right. And now we require f prime of x, which is what, Charlie? e to the x. Very nice there, Charlie. Don't forget dx. And now let's go to the underside. And remember, we have two pieces, each having two of these shaded regions. So that gives us four. And obviously our area is defined as the integral from natural log of one half to natural log of two of e to the x dx. Whew. All right. Now, Charlie, that second integral should be relatively easy. It's the first integral that's going to be a challenge. Remember, this is a non-calculator lab, which means you have to do it by hand. So let me give you a hint, Charlie. Here we go for this first integral. You could begin by letting u equal e to the x, giving you du equals e to the x dx. That will give you an integral of the form square root of 1 plus u squared, which would have to be done by trig substitution. Ooh. Well, in that case, you're going to let u equal tangent of theta, and therefore du equals secant squared d theta. And when you simplify things out, you should end up with an integral of secant cubed theta d theta, which can be done by integration by parts. Anyway, you got 10 minutes, Charlie. Get to work. This is hard. Can I just take it home? Sure, you could take it home after I grade it. But Charlie, this is calculus. You're in the big time. So you better get to work. And that goes for you too.